unless any major developments occur, this will be my last video about the potential ban of DJI drones in the United States for a while. You know, although it's an important issue, it's also kind of tiring to keep hearing about it and keep talking about it and reading about it. It's it's kind of exhausting, basically. I think I think we just need to get back to flying drones, like learning new tricks and tips and tutorials and understand that there is nothing stopping us right now from enjoying this hobby. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you kind of this epiphany that I had, I would call it, about why this possibly could be all happening and maybe it's not for the reason that we all think it is. So first fact, even if American lawmakers decide that anything from DJI that uses our network should be banned, the products that you currently own and even the products that you will buy in the immediate future will continue to work. They're still going to get FCC certification and you're going to still be able to fly anything that you have in any products that you have from DJI, you're going to be able to use right now. So for instance, let's say DJI releases something like the Air 4 or a brand new drone or something this coming fall and you purchase it, you have nothing to worry about because it was produced and sold before any sort of ban was put into place. Now, opinion. There are so many things in the House of Representatives version of the National Defense Authorization Act that the Senate is just not going to accept and I'm assuming vice versa. So the likelihood of that NDAA passing before this December is very, very low. It's gonna take a lot of negotiating between the House and the Senate before they come up with a National Defense Authorization Act that they agree on. And this would mean that there is still a lot of time before any actual legislation targeting DJI products is put into place. My guess is that if it does actually happen, it's not going to be until late 2025 or even 2026 before the FCC actually quits certifying DJI products. Fact, our lawmakers that are pushing this legislation continue to claim that it is in the best interest of our country to disallow DJI drones from flying over our cities and lakes, and it's all because of national security. Opinion, nobody in their right mind or has any knowledge at all about drones and how they work actually believes that this has anything to do with national security. The claims being made are based on speculation and conjecture, and they are choosing to omit the fact that you can fly a DJI drone without being connected to any network. You know what would be an actual reasonable bill if this truly were about security? Because you know it's not. If, if it really was about security, they would be banning everything and anything made by DJI right now like instantly, but no, it's gonna be two or three years before anything actually gets into place if this does pass. But here's a reasonable bill or a suggestion, require all drones from DJI to be air-gapped and for any information that does need to be sent to DJI, like the activation process, give the US government the ability to monitor any information that is transferred. Keep all of the data here. And as I understand it, that's already happening because DJI data is stored on Amazon Web Services. But I honestly don't know enough about that to effectively help you understand it. But sounds like everything stays right here in the United States. Anyway, we were already tracked on pretty much everything else that we do, right? So we might as well just let them know when we got a new drone, right? I don't know. I think most people watching this share my opinion that this legislation is an effort to force our public safety and inspection entities to find and purchase American alternatives that have been struggling to break into that market. Fact, I know things are heating up in the world of drones, but EcoFlow can help you stay cool with their portable air conditioner, the Wave 2. This 5100 BTU air conditioner and 6100 BTU heater can operate on AC power or with the optional battery that lasts up to eight hours. Anywhere you go, you can have instantly cool air or warm air to keep you comfortable. You can take it camping, keep it in your garage, take it to your off-grid cabin in your vehicle or RV, and you can just have it sitting next to you outside on a hot day. It can be charged with solar power, AC, DC, or with a portable power station. It's super quiet, just 44 decibels, 
and there's no installation required. You plug it in, you turn it on, and you enjoy the comfort. It is massively discounted right now, and that's why I think it's worth taking a look at if you enjoy comfort anywhere that you go. Now, we use it all the time in the tent when we go camping. We take the camper, but the kids go in the tent, and it keeps them happy all day and all night, especially on those hot, muggy days. There's a link in the video description if you want to learn more details about the Wave 2, or you can purchase it with that link as well. Thank you to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video, and my opinion is you're not going to find a colder, more portable AC at this price anywhere. Fact. There are no current American alternatives to DJI that can fill the gap that will be created by removing them from the market. In the five-figure range, there are a few options, but anything less than $10,000 is non-existent. And this basically puts any small commercial drone fleets, like mine, out of business. And it takes away the rights of nearly 2 million Americans to enjoy their hobby. Opinion? If any kind of DJI ban does pass, and I'm going to be honest here, I think there will eventually be a few companies, both American and abroad, that will fill the void with viable options. I do think that it's going to take a very long time, but good old capitalism will prevail in the end. Now, that being said, I don't believe that we will ever see the same quality and commitment to excellence that DJI has in their products. There's no denying that. Nobody can argue with that. They are just too good. Fact. It's well known that the Commercial Drone Alliance has been working towards the integration of UAVs into the national airspace system for a few years now. The board members of this alliance are from companies like Wing, Zipline, Skydio, Amazon Prime Air, and others who want to cash in on the UAV wave. Here's a little known fact. The executive director of the Commercial Drone Alliance and seven of the other 10 staff members all work as lawyers for the same law firm. I don't know if that means anything, I've just found it to be very interesting. Integrating drones into the national airspace system has been quite a challenge, mostly due to all of the regulations, but also because it's nearly impossible to figure out how to create a commercial UAV highway with all of these pesky recreational drones flying around. Opinion. Maybe this isn't just about bolstering the American drone market. Maybe if the Commercial Drone Alliance could find a way to remove a couple million drones from the sky in one fell swoop, then they could move forward with their UAV superhighway. Remote ID was the first step. The next step, eliminate 70% of the air traffic by grounding them through legislation. There's no other way to stop the recreational drone industry. If I'm on the right track, it certainly would be an effective strategy, don't you think? But I'm just a YouTuber, so what the heck do I know? What do you think? Could there be more to this effort to ban DJI in the United States? Talk about it in the comments. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you love drones and pretty much anything tech related. Lots of new fun stuff coming real soon. See ya.